Going away is pretty tough. For me, it was tough the first time because we didn't know how long we were going for. So it's hard to get your family ready, it's hard to get yourself ready. But it's a very busy time, so there's not actually much time to, to focus on what it feels like. I was with the Special Operations Task Group and, and their morale was outstanding. Um, I'm intensely proud of everything that I saw them do and, and was associated with. They, were, they knew they'd been well trained, they knew they were well equipped, um, and they believed in the task they'd been sent to do. When we arrived in 2006, um, Tarankout in particular, but also Kandahar, were bases that were, were still rapidly growing and, uh, and being built. They were, they were literally being built around us, um, which was great because there's always this excitement of something new that's going on. But things were, um, were pretty primitive, um, but in no sense um, unusual for us. Um, even with uh, the basic base, it was still more comfortable than living in a hutchie in Shawwater Bay. Afghanistan's an amazing place. It, it is like going back to um, some of the Bible stories that I grew up with and some of the images that you see of, of people riding around on donkeys and um, buildings that are actually made out of mud um, and the dust and um, the, the other things that you sense. The, the smells are unique to, uh, to anywhere else. It's an amazing place and there's a sense of almost culture shock when you first arrive there. Um, and everything about it feels different. Just the dust feels different in Afghanistan to the dust in Australia. My role when I'm overseas is very much in the human space, um, but it actually goes a little bit beyond that. So I get um, beyond the head into the heart, um, into the soul, I would think, and have that privilege of working with people at that dimension. And I've been intensely proud of the care um, that our operators um, take when they're making the decisions as how to, how to go to war, how to fight the battle. Yeah, they understand that what they're doing has devastating effects and they're very careful how they apply that devastating force. So they have had opportunities that they've told me about where legally they may well have opened fire um, or called fire onto a, a target, but they've decided for quite appropriate moral reasons that that was not a good thing to do. I had um, a unique role uh, and sometimes it was uh, trying to encourage the guys to do simple things like write a letter home. Uh, the communication home was, was fairly basic back in those days. We had access to phones but not unlimited access. We had access to email but again not unlimited access. So sometimes it was as simple as um, reminding the guys uh, to call home, reminding them that a letter was a good idea or um, I might receive phone calls from the welfare officer at home saying that a family were concerned that they hadn't heard um, from a deployed member for a while. The gravity and the grim responsibility of war is not lost on the people uh, that we've got overseas. So they are, they'll deal with what they have to deal with at the time and they'll do their job and they'll do it very well. But they'll also come back afterwards and in the quiet times sit down and actually talk about and I'll help them, and that's my privilege, to make meaning and make sense out of what they've had to do in this, uh, in this tough place. What the work they do is tough. They do it very well, but it has an effect on them. The fighting, um, I didn't get involved in too much, but uh, the guys that I was with were, uh, were doing things that were pretty intense. And for, um, for many of the, the people that I was deployed with, uh, this was their first encounter with, uh, with high intensity um, conflict. And some of the actions that um, the guys were involved in that they've been appropriately decorated for um, were, um, were of, of, of high intensity. Uh, and for many of them, I was uh, the one that had the privilege of talking to them about what it felt like to be in combat for the first time. The, the absolute bravery that I have seen is something that's not well understood by our community. I've had the privilege of chatting with soldiers after they've been um, out on a night patrol and I've had the privilege of walking around their vehicles with them the next morning and having them point out to me the bullet holes and the battle damage on their vehicles. And I've had the privilege of just chatting with them as they come to terms with what they've seen. These are extraordinarily brave men and women 
who don't even actually understand their own bravery. And I hope that they have the opportunity of sharing over time through books, through them telling their stories. Actually, what an amazing task, how brave and how professional they have been in what they've done. To chat to soldiers um, around their battle damaged vehicles and to have them, to ask them, you know, what happened, how those, um, how all those bullet holes got in the side of that vehicle. And to have them say, oh, well, it didn't matter, we were on the other side of the vehicle at the time, we were, we were firing back over. And then to say to them, but yes, there are bullet holes on that side too. Oh yeah, Padre, but that was fine. We were on the other side of the vehicle when they came in. Right, but that radio antenna's just been shot off. You sit there, your head is beside that. Yeah, but at the time it was okay, I'd bent over to pick something up from the bottom of the vehicle. And to, then to have them, in a matter of fact way, explain the other battle damages on the vehicle. This is the sort of story that I hope the, uh, the Australian people can come to understand because it will make them intensely proud of the people that they've sent overseas on our behalf. Losing a comrade, I think, is probably the toughest thing that I've seen amongst soldiers deployed overseas. These are people who know the risks and they know what they're trained to do and they're not worried so much about what happens to them but they do in care intensely for their mates. And the caring for the guys in their team is pretty much, at the time, the principal motivator for, um, for our soldiers that are there. They may go to war for their country, they may go to war for the cause of freedom, they may go to war for the cause of justice, um, for Australia, for their families. But when they're there, when they're fighting, it's all about their mates. One of the hardest things that um, anyone in uniform ever has to do is go and knock on the door of a family and give them the bad news uh, that someone that they love um, has been either seriously injured or killed on operations overseas. It's hard for us to do. It's particularly hard if we've known the, the, the member who's uh, been killed or injured. But we, when we knock on the door, we know that that is going to have a devastating effect on the people that we're about to encounter. It's, it's one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. When we're delivering news like that, there's actually nothing we can say that's right. There are things we can say that would be wrong, but there's nothing that we can say that helps. Meeting the locals was, um, was really important for me and, and I think for, for all of our soldiers because it made the people that we were working with, it made the Afghan people, the people we were working for, it made them human beings, it made them real. And I think Australians uh, did a better job than many others in actually relating to the people that, um, that we encountered in Afghanistan. I think there are complexities in Afghanistan that, that we haven't seen in some other um, conflicts. Some of those complexities were there in Vietnam in, in different ways. but. The complexities, the difficulties for some of the soldiers this time is that they're dealing with a threat that's very hard to deal with. There's no one often to fight back against. So an improvised explosive device which goes off, there may be no one apparent um, that you can engage or actually do anything with. That creates um, a stress or a build-up of stress because there's actually no action that you can take to get rid of the adrenaline and the other um, chemicals that are, that are floating around the system. There's no action that you can actually take to, to deal with um, the devastating effect that you might have encountered. There are other complications too because it's a community we're trying to help. It's a community that we are helping and yet this war is going on right in their midst. So. And again, it's something I think the Australians have been very good at. Um, we have to be quite discriminate in how we use the devastating force that we carry because we, we want to. In fact, we have made sure that we don't hurt the people we're trying to help. And yet at the same time, we have an enemy that we're trying to find um, to deal with um, for our own protection, but also to protect the community from. Uh, Post-traumatic stress disorder and, um, and the other mental health um, issues are getting more attention and they're getting better understood and, and they're getting better treated. I think what the guys um, are struggling with more is the issues that come afterwards, um, the character, the moral, the spiritual injuries, as they struggle to make sense or meaning 
um, and purpose and to get on with their lives um, uh, afterwards. And sometimes these aren't becoming apparent until months, um, years after the actual um, events that people are struggling to deal with. I've come home with um, some indelible memories. I was um, privileged, and I know that, to work with um, some of our finest men and women and to get inside their minds and inside their, their very souls and spirits. And I'm incredibly impressed with what I found there. These are fine Australian men and women who've come from all over our country. They've been well trained and well selected and well led and they've done a job which they are rightly proud of. And for me, seeing the calibre of, um, of what they've been doing and how they've done it, for me being able to help them as they struggle with the meaning and struggle with the cost of what they've done um, has been a great privilege and uh, I feel intensely um, proud that I was able to be part of it. There are other um, impressive things that I hope we can help our men and women acknowledge that they've done. And I hope that they can have a sense of success in how they have demonstrated to themselves that they're good and capable um, people, that they are the fine and worthy successors of things like the Anzac tradition. One of the things that I, I don't think we've um, yet come to terms with is that victory or success in Afghanistan is not going to be measured in the way it might have been measured in the past. I think some of our best successes are actually going to be in the people that we bring home and hopefully the pride that they will have in the job that they've done.